Welcome back to my channel Dreamers, today I want to talk to you about a fundamental part of my projects and that is storyboards, animated storyboards. Yes, because to get to create a complete scene you need a starting sketch where I decide how to arrange the background, which elements to insert and how to move them to finish with the camera movements. If you are interested, then watch the video until the end because we'll do an exercise together. As always, I thank you for your continued support. Animal Project is taking shape and this is also thanks to your help. I recently did a poll to choose the logo and well, I'd say we have a winner here. Obviously, I will do more tests in the future. I will give you the opportunity to help me if you want to be more active in this work. Your ideas and advice will be of help to me. In the meantime, if you haven't already done, you know what to do. Before starting the tutorial, I'll talk to you again about Colonote. As you know, my discount code is always active if you decide to purchase the premium version of the app. Do you know there are a lot of really interesting additions in the premium version? One of these is the stabilization of the brushes, an option that is very dear to me because the first thing that happens is that my hand shakes. <laughs> but above all it allows you to write and draw with clean lines. Let's do a test first without brush stabilization. As you know, I'm very good at drawing. Mm -mm -mm. What a beautiful day, our blue sun. Now I activate the stabilization, click on the brush, advanced settings, and set fluid. This allows me to draw much cleaner lines. Definitely better. What do you think? In the premium version of Colonote you will find this and many other incredible features. If you are interested, use my discount code to get 50% off. But here we are again on Dreams to start today's tutorial. As I was saying, we'll make an animated storyboard. This will serve us as a basis for me to create my scenes. Even if in the beginning I go to create a static storyboard, like in this case. More precisely, we'll see this scene where a car arrives from the right inside the landscape and then runs towards the foreground. In these storyboards, I note down a few things that I will then try to apply to the final scene, such as the duration of the scene, if there is an element that I want to give more importance to, such as the lights of the car and obviously the noise. Once I have drawn my storyboards, I can go directly to Dreams to create the scene in question with all the elements I need and the animations. To speed up the process, the elements will first be only sketched. With the animation in rig, the drawing part is definitely faster than the animation part. So I first create it with sketched shapes. On a new project, I'm going to recreate the same sequence in the form of a draft with all the rogue shapes I need and the animations. I start by drawing the background. I go to get the syrup brush. I often use it in this phase because it allows me to be very fluid in drawing the fine lines. In this phase the quality of the drawing is not important, but that all the shapes I need are there. 
Let's darken the background a little too, so you can see better, ok. I also added this red frame outside the scene limits, it's important in drawing mode to understand the boundaries of the scene. Now I take the black color again and I'm going to draw the background, the landscape where the car will have to run. I always draw outside the limits of the scene with the camera movements, that I will insert in this way I will have more freedom of movement. How good I am at drawing! Incredible! <laughs> now the road... I think there needs to be a new asphalt surface. Ok, now I fill the track and vamos! This is the most background elements of our scene. On another track I add this tree, in the final scene the car at this point will have to pass behind it. This shape will need to be full, so once drawn let's try to fill the tree crown with a lighter color. Only the tree crown, <laughs> I need to complete the line here, ok. Very nice this tree, and fill the track. Ok dreamers, here we are. For now I'm going to group these two elements because I want to make them a little transparent, to be able to better draw the levels above. Like this. Ok. On a new track I draw the road in the foreground. I'm going to close this shape because in this case too I'll have to fill it with a I'll have to fill it with a lighter color. <laughs> now fill, ok. I always want to remind you that you don't have to be precise in the drawings at this stage. The important thing will be to have everything we need. Continuing, I'm going to draw the other elements, such as this wooden stake, which will be very useful to create a parallax effect to make the scene more three-dimensional. I'm going to add another detail that I forgot about wooden stake. I'm going to draw three below the level of the road in the foreground. Like this, ok. Now we have all the elements of the landscape. At this point we group all the drawn elements, this is because there will be camera movements that will have to act on everything. Here I remove the opacity filter, I need everything to be seen at its best. And in the road in the foreground I give an HSB filter to darken the shape a little. There are a few holes that I'm going to fill now. Mm, delete this. Ok. I know guys, I'm wasting my time, right? <laughs> ok, here we are. Now I'm going to make the first animation, I'm hiding these layers for now, and I'm going to draw the car. Are you ready? This will be the most beautiful drawing of the whole scene, and above all the simplest to make. Fill the track. Now resides. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the car. The animation I will do will be to try to make it follow the road. First I will go and take it out of the scene to the right. I will then to try to make it follow the path. I'm going to insert some keyframe with the move and scale tool on the car to make it move. For example at 2 seconds I take it and move it here. 
I also resize it a bit, but for now I just need it as a reference. We'll see later how to resize it better. I had another keyframe at 4 seconds and I'm going to move the shape here. And resize. Obviously the movement is not as fluid as I want, but this serves us a basis for me. I had another keyframe at 5 seconds, here the movement will be faster. The car will have to quickly exit the screen to the left. Ok. From right to left, again to right and left. The animation is not perfect. I need to adjust the keyframes on the X and Y axis to get something fluid and realistic. I open the coordinates here and let's do same attempts. In this case we have to proceed by trial and error and for now we are going to work on Y, therefore on the height of the car. At this point it arrives too quickly at the bottom. I move the keyframe on Y farther forward. I bring it here, trying to follow the road I lower the car, it comes even earlier, <laughs> so I will have to add another keyframe on Y for example here and raise the shape, here and up the car. Ok, now better. I repeat the operation here too, so that the car goes lower here. At this point it must be lower. We'll leave it here for now and then vroom. Vroom. Ok, now we have the car animation, but do you remember the resizing? I'm going to delete all these keyframes here in the center. As a trend curve I do ease in for both. And the animation of our fantastic car is complete. Next step I'm going to reactivate all the elements because I want to create a camera movement and a parallax effect for the foreground layers. Go and recover all my previous tutorials on the parallax effect if you haven't seen them yet. I start by creating animation on the wall group. I add a keyframe with the move and scale tool here at 8 seconds. I go back to frame 0 and move the group to the right. Ok, here, trend curve to linear. Nice, but as you can see the parallax effect is missing with the shapes in the foreground. I add a bit of parallax effect for example on the wooden stake in the foreground and this will already make a lot of difference. In correspondence with the animation keyframes of the main group I also set some points on this shape. And in the keyframe 0 I move the stake to the right. It really doesn't take much to make the animation much more 3 dimensional. What do you think? I'm also going to add the camera shake to make the scene even more dynamic. A vibration when the car passes in the foreground. For this it's important to have all the elements in a single group. I will work on the Y axis since X is already busy with the lateral movement. As the car disappears to the left I add a camera movement. I add some keyframe at this point very close. Another one farther ahead and in the center I move the scene downwards. As the trend curve set is in and out. This way I get a camera shake effect that makes the action more dynamic. If you are interested in learning more about this topic, I have already made a tutorial. Go and get it! Today I showed you 
how I create a scene within my projects. It's obviously not the only way to do it, but for me it's really important to immediately understand all the animations that I will need to make the sequence really interesting to the viewer's eye. As always, I invite you to write in the comments if there is something that is not clear to you, or if you would like to dive deeper into some other topic. I remind you of my collaboration with Colonode, and below you can find my discount code. Thank you so much for watching, and 